Welcome to the TikTok Podcast. The clock is always ticking, so let's synchronize our watches and dive in. I'm your host, Callie Brigham, and I'm here to help you make time for what matters. Hey, friends. Welcome to the TikTok Podcast. When I was first thinking about this crazy idea of a podcast, I thought, well, let me make sure that I've got enough topics on my own that I could at least have a few subject matters that I could talk about. I mean, have you ever thought about just kind of you sit down in front of a mic and you just sort of share some things that you've learned along the way? So I started to make my list and this particular topic was on my list. It is near and dear to my heart. I've been wanting to share it for a while now with you and I was just sort of waiting for the right time. I don't know if this is the right time, but any time is the right time. And for a lot of us, we are smack into may Have you heard that term? So it's May, but it kind of has the craziness of December. So may It is just as busy, if not more, for moms of preschoolers all the way up to college grads, which is many of us listening. I know for us, we have every end of school program and recital and awards event and party and teacher's appreciation. And we're just sort of limping, (laughs) limping to the finish line. I don't know if you've ever read some of the funny posts about the start of the year versus the end of the year, like no more sweet notes in their lunch boxes. It's, I don't know, like a wilted carrot and a pack of pop tarts (laughs) if they're lucky and no one is getting new shoes. You're going to just shove those puppies in there. Like you can do it for two more weeks. My poor kids, they're pretty tall. My husband and I are both tall and they are right in the middle of their growth spurts. And my son's pants are too short. And (laughs) like, sorry, you're going to make it work for a couple more weeks. Then you just get summer clothes, which is just, you know, shorts and t-shirts and tank tops the rest of summer. And then we'll regroup in the fall. Anywho, Whether or not you're in this end of the school year boat with me, and many of us are not, chances are you have seasons where you're more susceptible than others to burnout, and we're going to actually tackle that specific topic in a future episode, or emotional cover parts, maybe more than others. So this is going to be a two-part series. Who loves a good series? Me. It's going to be bad news, good news. So let's get the bad news out of the way first. Are you that kind of person? Like, tell me the good news or the bad news. Tell me the bad news. This is also a subject that I've trained my sales team on for years and I've used both personally and professionally, like legit used, not just in theory. This is part of my DNA now. I know that there's nothing new under the sun, but some of this is unique to me and I want you to know it too. I think it's going to help you in so many different areas of your life. I know that we hone in on time management here, but I also know that time management is kind of like the center of the spokes and all the things shoot out from there or vice versa. Really emotional management is sort of the center of the spokes and time is just one of them. However you want to picture it in your head. So I'm calling this, and I've called this triggers. Maybe someday I'll come up with a different way of saying it, but triggers. And I believe that we all, well, I know that we all have them and we all have negative and positive triggers. So today we're going to talk about the negative ones. That's the bad news. And as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about this because of the connection between our emotions and our energy and our time. Once we have some of this maybe some awareness and some tools, then a lot of the other things are easier to fall in place. So let's discuss. And I just have to say, anytime I say that now, I think of my favorite Southern guy on Reels, Landon Talks. Have you ever heard of him? You have to follow him, especially if you're a bit confused with some of the Southern vernacular and the things that people say down here. And I'm going to, by the way, I'm going to put him in my positive triggers arsenal, but that's for next episode. Okay. Shout out to Landon Talks. Maybe he'll be on the show someday. All right, let's get serious. What is a negative trigger? So here's some general things that it is. Then we'll have some specific examples. A negative trigger is something that trips you up in your day, something that sends you spiraling, 
something that throws you off your game. Maybe it's an old story that keeps coming back to haunt you. A negative trigger could be a disappointment. A negative trigger could be a struggle. A negative trigger could be an unhealthy distraction. All right, let me keep describing them and we will get to some examples. A negative trigger tends to be repeated. So it's something that doesn't just happen once, but if you really look back, there's a pattern to it. And you might even start to realize that they're expected patterns. They're common patterns for you. A negative trigger could even take you back to your childhood or your past. But here's the most important thing I want you to remember today about negative triggers. A negative trigger is something out of your control. So repeat that after me. A negative trigger is something out of your control. That's going to be really important. It can also be something that someone says to you, something negative that happens to you professionally, even something like a change in your schedule that throws you off. So now that we have given a general overview of a negative trigger, let's give some examples. Now, some of these are going to seem really seemingly small. <laughs> and seemingly is the key word there. And this is why I think we get tripped up because it doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but it is. Okay, so what are some of them? All right, here's another Southern way of saying something. Ugly weather. It doesn't mean it's not like, well, it does mean it's not beautiful, but we just use that like nasty, bad, ugly weather. And it's pretty interesting because as I'm recording this, there's actually a rainstorm outside of my house and I'm hoping you can't hear it. All right. So ugly weather, bad weather. And why is this a trigger? Well, it could make you late for work. It could make you not feel motivated. It could just plain make you feel down. You know, there's that seasonal affective disorder. So bad weather. All right. What's another one? A bad hair day. <laughs> no matter how hard you try, you just don't feel like you're on your game. You just kind of feel bleh, right? Maybe for ladies, it can be hormonal. It could be that time of month or anything physical that's bothering you. Not necessarily chronic. We're talking about something that maybe it just was the last straw. Like for real, this pain, this ache, this the cramps, whatever it is. A negative trigger in sales, this might help you, would be maybe if you had a no-show or just a no or someone who ghosts you or someone who doesn't buy from you or doesn't join your team. A negative trigger could mean it could even be a statement that makes you feel less than. Maybe it reminds you of when you were a kid. Like maybe you were the blank one, not the blank one. So maybe your sister was the pretty one and you were the smart one. Maybe your brother was the athletic one and you were the quiet one, the shy one. You know, we have to really be careful with that, by the way. I'm just going to do a little tangent here. I remember a conversation that I had with my own kids. Now, this was a long time ago. We, ha we have this rule in our house <laughs> that there is no fighting, pushing, whatever. That's not the actual rule, although that is a rule, on the stairs. I mean, here's the deal. Kids are going to be kids, right? But just not on the stairs. There's just way too many... <laughs> dangerous and pretty significant injuries that could happen on the stairs if you're roughhousing. So that is a rule at the Brigham house. And the kids were much littler. I mean, like, I don't know, four and five years old. They're about 20 months apart. My son's the oldest, then my daughter. And so some kind of, I don't know, fight broke out on the stairs. And I go over to police it, to referee it. And before I even think about it, I say to my son, Something along the of uh, the lines of Brayden, I need you to be a leader. I need you to lead by example. That's enough. Stop. Whatever. Whatever I said doesn't really matter. I'm sure I said it in a very lovely tone, and <laughs> I'm sure it was like not the twentieth time I said it that day. But I said that to him, and all of a sudden I caught myself, and I thought, wait. Is it just because he's the oldest that he's the leader? Is he the boy that he's the leader? Why couldn't Maddie be the leader? She's younger. She's a girl. She can be a leader too. And I know that that I'm sure did not 
make any huge significant difference in who they be as they grow up. But I did catch myself. I was in that moment thinking, oh my goodness, what am I speaking into them? What am I saying about them that maybe later on could be a trigger? Now, I'm not going to go throughout life with tons of guilt. We've already had an episode on mom guilt with tons of guilt on like what I should have said, shouldn't have said. You know, at the end of the day, we're responsible. We're not a victim. We're responsible for how we allow other people to make us feel, right? But I just don't want to add to it if I can help it. But I use that example because maybe that was something significant for you growing up that somebody said repeatedly about you that now when you're an adult, if someone even gets close to labeling you in that way or to saying something that brings back that feeling or that hurt, trigger. That is a trigger. Maybe a trigger is an argument with a husband or boyfriend or best friend or child. Maybe it's a boss coming down at you at work again. Maybe a trigger is somebody else's emergency. Maybe it's somebody that is just always not prepared and then boom, and now it's your responsibility. Okay. So you get the idea. It can be anything from a rainy, dreary day like it is today when I'm recording the podcast or something more significant that just sends you off and down the bad path. It just messes things up in your head. What I'm going to ask you to do in today's episode is to make a list of your most common negative triggers. I even want you to have them somewhere where you can go back to see them. Maybe even your note section on your phone. So what are the things outside of your control that feel like an attack or they just bum you out? or they frustrate you, or they stop your rhythm for the day. This list can be long, and I kind of want it to be long, because knowing what these things are is going to make a significant difference. Now, just for quick clarification, a trigger list, a negative trigger list, is not quite the same as a bug me list. Because, for example, bad weather is not going to be on the bug me list. Now, there can be some crossover, but the bug me list is more systems or things that aren't working for you or time wasters. This trigger idea is much more of the emotional state you find yourself in when something happens to you. Now, I know that we don't like to say that in our world, right? We have eliminated things happening to me. We say things happen for me, but you're allowed to go ahead and process that feeling as you make the list. All right. So the negative trigger list are the things that, ah, when that happens, maybe it is when clothes don't fit right. I mean, I don't know. Something that would make you late, make you delayed, that would cause you to not want to get to work or to be active or to be around people or to feel good about yourself. Okay. You guys got the idea. This is really important work that we're doing here. Now, we're going to have a week in between episode drops, so that's plenty of time to make your negative trigger list. I also feel like I want to have some clarification here. I am a big fan of seeking professional help when needed. So if making this list is a trigger to you in a way that really is unhealthy and it really kind of sends you down that bad path like I talked about, I don't want you to stay there, and I do encourage you to seek help if necessary. So I'd prefer that this is more of an awareness exercise that you're okay doing. That's really my intention, all right? So just as a review for part one, the negative triggers are things that you've noticed. They're habitual. They have a pattern to them. It's when you're around this person, you feel this way. When this situation happens, you always feel less than, or you always feel defeated, or you always feel like you can't do it, or you don't want to do it, or you don't want to go on. It's the things that make you want to crawl into bed. It's the things that make you say like, oh, I just wish it was tomorrow already. It's the things that maybe do strike some comparison in you. And again, they can be tiny little things like when your nail breaks or your phone screen gets cracked. (laughs) Or they can be a little bit more significant than that. All right. So that is your mission because I want you to put this work in. 
I can tell you some success stories after success stories, but the first thing we have to do is we have to start with the negative trigger piece. All right, so shorter episode than normal today because I'm going to give you that little extra time to pull out your notes section to start to make a list of the negative triggers. The only rule that you have is that it has to be something outside of your control. All right, and go. And by the way, when you have your phone out, hop on over to our Apple podcast. (laughs) Give the show a quick five-star review, write a little something, something, share this with a friend. All right, you guys, let's go. May, December, it's on trigger list, negative trigger list, part one. You've got this. All right, we'll see you next week for part two. Thank you for joining me on the TikTok podcast. Please subscribe, rate, and leave a five-star review. Your feedback fuels our mission to help you master your time. Set your alarm for our next episode, and until then, make every moment count.